If you plan on drag racing your 2018 and newer manual GT on a sticky tire, well then upgrading your drive shaft to the DSS three and a half inch aluminum option here will be a great way to ensure your day doesn't get cut short due to snapping the stocker. Now on top of being stronger, this one piece aluminum option will save you a couple of pounds of rotational mass as well for right around the mid to high $800 price point. Installation won't be too bad, but since all of your work is done underneath the car, exhaust does need to get dropped, figure a solid two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, maybe a few hours to complete from start to finish as we'll demonstrate later in the video. So this is one of those parts that really isn't terribly necessary for most casual six-speed owners out there, as that stock two-piece drive shaft will serve its purpose just fine, even when you start pouring on some power. However, this is one of two key driveline components, the other being half shafts, that should be considered when you start seriously preparing to drag race your manual third gen Coyote and launching hard with a sticky tire. The reality is traction is the destroyer of a lot of these components and typically you'll see those half shafts be the first weak link once you dump that clutch and hook up on a sticky radial or bias ply. The second part that's likely to go will be your stock drive shaft of course, so therefore I would certainly recommend doing some half shafts in addition to the drive shaft if you're really gonna go full send at the drag strip. But getting to the actual drive shaft that we're talking about here today, and you're gonna find this is one of two different options currently available from the drive shaft shop for the manual cars, the other being the more expensive carbon fiber option. Now both drive shafts are advertised to support over 1,000 horsepower, and both will carry the same one year warranty. However, carbon fiber option will have a little bit more torsional give before finally letting go. Now, one of the things DSS is most excited about with their 2018 and newer manual drive shaft is the fact that it now features what's called a direct fit rear CV, which is gonna operate very much like the stocker and basically does not require the use of any additional adapter plates, which can sometimes be a little problematic. On top of that, eliminating that additional adapter plate will also save some weight while getting rid of that failure point. Materials again will be T6 aluminum for a majority of your construction here along with those billet end caps. Now the rear CV we just talked about also features chromoly internals and a Spicer 1350 U-joint. Spine plugs will be extremely solid thanks to the 300M material and DSS is gonna top everything off with their forged aluminum U-joint flange. And then of course, there's the weight savings aspect with something like this, right? Typically that two-piece factory drive shaft gonna weigh in around 24, 25 pounds, give or take. But this option's gonna come in on average around 17, 18 pounds. So you're saving, depending on your option, six to seven pounds here of rotational mass, which is really gonna help the car rev quicker and just require less effort from the engine to turn. So basically, anytime you can shed some rotational mass, whether it be through lighter wheels, lighter flywheel, or drive shaft, it's usually a very good thing. But now, as promised, we do want to segue into the installation. And honestly, guys, it's not really a difficult job, but because the car does need to get elevated and you do need to take that exhaust off to gain some more access to the drive shaft, site's so automatically just going to kick this one up to a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter. Call it a couple of hours or so to complete from start to finish. But now, to give you a better idea of how it will all go down, here's that detailed walkthrough and quick tool breakdown. Tools used for this install are a cordless impact gun, a power or manual ratchet, a 16 millimeter wrench, a 19 millimeter wrench, a small extension, an 18 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, 13 millimeter socket, 10 millimeter Allen, eight millimeter Allen, a torque wrench, a pry bar, a small dead blow hammer, and a bottle of blue Loctite. So the first step of this install is gonna to be to get your car up in the air, either on a lift or securely on jack stands, but either way, you're gonna to need to get the car off the ground. And before we can get the drive shaft out of the car, we're gonna to have to remove the exhaust, so I'm gonna walk you through that first. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is unbolt my rear hangers. Now, some people like to leave these in and just slide the rods out of the hangers. I like to unbolt them, it just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter socket, and I'm gonna unbolt the two from the frame.
Next, I'm gonna remove the two 13 millimeter headed bolts here at the rear subframe, but I'm gonna leave the hangers attached for now until I undo the sleeve clamps up at the front. Now I'm just gonna loosen up these two sleeve clamps here. I'm gonna slide the clamps back. That'll allow the exhaust pipe to drop down and with the help of a friend, I'm gonna remove the entire exhaust system in one piece. I'm using a 15 millimeter socket to remove these nuts. All right, so I'm ready to drop the entire exhaust system in one piece. Basically what I'm gonna do is I have all of the weight hanging on these two hangers here and they're just hooked in now that I've unbolted them. So I'm just gonna lift them up, slide it back and the whole thing's gonna come out. So now I'm gonna unbolt the drive shaft from the transmission. There is a three bolt flange here on the back of the trans that I have to remove the three bolts for. I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter socket on an extension with an impact gun to get those out. So now I'm gonna move on to the back of the vehicle. I'm gonna unbolt the drive shaft from the differential. There are six 10 millimeter headed bolts. I'm just gonna use a 10 millimeter socket on an impact to remove them. Now finally, what I'm gonna to have to do is unbolt the carrier bearing from the vehicle to get the drive shaft out. I've got it supported here in the middle so that it can't sag on me so that I can control how it comes out of the vehicle. All right, so I'm just using a 13 millimeter socket on an extension and an impact gun. All right, now we can start wiggling everything out of place. support. All right, so before we can install the drive shaft into the vehicle, we need to remove the pre-installed flange for the adapter on the back of the transmission. They have two yellow indicator marks. This is for balance, so when we do install the drive shaft into the car, we're gonna make sure that we line up these indication marks so that we don't have any pulsation issues. The adapter flange is held to the drive shaft with these four bolts. They are 16 millimeter head, so just use a 16 mil wrench to unbolt it and install it onto the vehicle. All right, so now we're ready to install the adapter flange onto the back of the transmission. There's a large recess cut out on the back of the adapter plate that you're gonna to wanna to make sure is facing out. And you're gonna also wanna apply a small dab of blue Loctite to the threads of your bolts before you install them. All right, now I'm just gonna use a 10 millimeter Allen socket and I'm going to uh, snug these bolts down and then torque them to 70 foot pounds. All right, so now I can torque my bolts down to 70 foot-pounds using my torque wrench here, but I also need to use a small pry bar on the back of the flange on the part of the bolt that's sticking out of the back and just wedging the pry bar into place to keep the transmission from spinning while I try to torque the bolts down.
So the three bolts that you just installed in the flange for the drive shaft are actually extending out past the back of the flange for the transmission. That's on purpose. They provide you with a lock washer and a nut that needs to be installed on the back for extra security. You're gonna need a 19 millimeter wrench to tighten down that nut and you'll hold the bolt tight with the 10 millimeter Allen that you used in the previous step. All right. Now that all three of those bolts are tight, we can install our drive shaft. All right, so because I'm now dealing with a solid one-piece drive shaft, I no longer have the flexibility to install the drive shaft with the CV at the rear and the universal joint at the front. I need to make a little bit more room to get everything into place. So what I'm gonna do is remove this intermediate pipe off the back of the cat on the driver's side, and I'm also going to support and remove the transmission cross member to give me the room I need to get the solid one-piece drive shaft into place. I'm going to use a 15 millimeter socket for the intermediate pipe and I'm going to use a 15 and an 18 millimeter for the uh, transmission cross member. Now that I have all that out of my way, I can install my drive shaft. All right, so I'm just gonna install the back end flange first and get that seated properly so that I have enough wiggle room up at the front to get the universal joint into place. Make sure to apply a small dab of blue Loctite to your bolt threads before you install. Now that I have the back end supported with a couple of bolts, I can line up the paint marks that I previously mentioned on the front flange and slide things into place and install my bolts. Once again, make sure you install a small dab of blue Loctite onto each bolt thread before you install it.
And I'm just gonna use a 16 millimeter wrench to get the bolts going so that I can get all four of them in and get all my rear flange bolts going and then I can tighten everything down. Now that you've got all those bolts started and snugged in place, go back, tighten them down to 70 foot-pounds just like you did for the adapter flange bolts. And now you can move on to the rear flanges and we're gonna tighten them to 57 foot-pounds. So now that we have all six bolts for the rear flange started and snugged into place, you can tighten them down to 57 foot-pounds. At this point, it's not gonna be a bad idea to either have the e-brake pulled or a buddy in the car with his foot on the brake so the drive shaft can't spin while you torque them down. Now we're ready to throw our exhaust and our transmission cross member back into place. Now we can throw our transmission cross member back into place, getting all our bolts started by hand, and then we'll tighten them up with a 15 and 18 millimeter socket. Now that transmission cross member is in place, we can throw our exhaust back in. So now with the help of a friend, you can reinstall your exhaust system, bolt down your hangers, and tighten up your couplers. And that's gonna wrap this one up. Now I'm just gonna use my 15 millimeter socket to tighten up the couplers and a 13 millimeter socket to bolt down all of my hangers. Right, now I'm just gonna reinstall my factory hardware and tighten down my hangers.
And that's going to wrap up this review and install of the Drive Shaft Shop 3.5 inch one piece aluminum drive shaft fitting your 2018 to 2020 Mustang GT with manual transmission. Thanks for watching, and for all things Mustang, keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.